Well, hi, and thanks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel. Today's a little bit different. We're not going to be shooting. Um, we're going to do a trigger job on a Firework Pile Model 124. Uh, by trigger job, I mean we're going to do a trigger swap. A good friend and a fellow subscriber um, went ahead and sent me uh, a trigger. Uh, wouldn't take any money for it. He sent me a trigger that he's modified. Uh, said it should make a big difference in the rifle. So we're going to install it today, and we're going to see what kind of difference we get. Uh, currently, the trigger on this gun is a little bit lackluster. It's um, I can adjust the trigger. I can only get about two settings out of it. One is to uh, have an extremely long first stage with no pronounced wall at the second stage. It just kind of rolls over and fires. Uh, and the second option is to tighten it up a little bit, and then I'll get a nice first stage. Uh, then I get a little click, and then I'm at the back wall. And if I apply uh, about another three pounds, maybe a little more than three pound pressure, the gun will fire. And that's a little bit too much for me. I, I like to shoot from the bench. I'm not a sporting guy anymore. I used to do a lot of hunting, but no more. Uh, so I like my triggers a lot lighter than that. So uh, according to my friend, he said this should make a big difference. So we're going to try it and see what we can get. So stick around. This ought to be fun. Uh, let's get headed to the workbench and get the show on the road. Thanks so much for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel, folks. I really appreciate it. Okay, so we're at the workbench with the Firework Mile 124, and we're getting ready to install the new trigger assembly. This trigger assembly includes the adjusting screw. The first step will be to remove the stock. Always use the proper size screwdriver when removing screws from your rifle, and this will avoid unsightly damage to the screw heads. Once the stock has been removed, we can take the action over to the spring vise, where we can begin the disassembly process. You'll note here I have a block of wood that sits up against the rear of the uh, receiver tube, and there's a notch cut in that block which fits nicely over the safety lever so that we can avoid any damage when we apply pressure to the rear end of that receiver. We'll adjust the tension here so it's just right. We don't want too much forward pressure from the spring vise, and we don't want too much rearward pressure from the spring itself pushing on that lug. We want that lug to have very little resistance coming out of that gun so that we don't damage the threads. A 7 16 wrench or an 11 millimeter wrench is ideal for this task. Once the lug has been loosened a little bit, it should be able to come out with just finger uh, pressure without having to use the wrench. We'll set that aside and safekeeping for later. And now we can begin unscrewing the spring vise and re removing the tension off the spring so that we can take the trigger group out of the rifle. At this point, it's a good idea to put your hand underneath the top of the trigger group so that the safety doesn't fall to the floor. Once the group has been removed, we can take it to the bench where we'll remove the pin that holds the trigger along with the main sear in place inside the trigger group. This pin is not in very tightly and it can be removed almost completely by fingers. However, I didn't know that at first until I tapped on it a couple of times with the punch and realized that the pin is very loose fitting in that hole. As a matter of fact, when I put it back together again, it just required some pressure from my thumb in order to seat it completely down. Finagling that trigger a little bit back and forth until we find our way out of that group. And this will also free up the main sear, which should drop right out. And there it is on the bench. So now the trigger and the main sear are out of the gun. There's a little spring on the top of the forward face of that trigger up near the hinge hole, and that needs to be moved to the new trigger, of course. My friend also sent me a small E-clip, which fits over the adjusting screw inside a little window on the trigger. And that E-clip has to be installed. And that proved to be probably one of the most difficult parts of this whole task, is getting that E-clip into place. There's a little notch on the adjusting screw that allows for the E-clip to snap into position. And you can see it's a very small little clip, tough to work with. 
tough to see with 60 year old eyes, I can tell you that. I found that a pair of needle nose pliers was a good tool to not only set it in position, but also to push it home with once it's in position. But be prepared for quite a few tries. If you're anything like me, it's not gonna go on the first one. Snap it down and finally got the E-clip installed. The main sear goes in from the top of the trigger group and kind of slides into a little slot towards the rear of the trigger group. From there, the trigger comes in from the bottom and you have to finagle it around a little bit until you get it into position. And once you do, you have to line up the hole in the main sear along with the hole in the trigger and the hole in the receiver block that houses all the parts. It sounds easy, but it's not. It takes a few tries to get this as well. Moving everything around till everything lines up. Then we'll get that pin. And again, as I said earlier, if everything's lined up properly, it should push in with very little effort. Once the pin is in, the trigger group is ready to go back into the rifle. Try not to lose that trigger spring slash safety spring. This was a, an extra that came with the trigger. It's shorter than the original and it's got a little less tension on it than the original. I believe that's one of the secrets to improving the trigger performance. I'm sorry I'm a little bit out of frame here, but the, the safety sits over that spring. And then while holding the safety in place, you can begin to reassemble the trigger group into the receiver tube. Once everything begins to slide inside, we'll hold it in place, take up the tension on the spring vise, put that block on the rear end of the receiver. And now we can begin to tighten everything up and push the trigger group back into the spring tube until the hole lines up. Using a tapered punch is a good idea. It makes it very easy to line up that hole for the lug to go back in. The lug should screw in pretty much with just finger tension. You won't need the wrench until you get it all the way down. Be very careful using the wrench early because you could cross thread that lug. Lug is tight. The action is ready to go back into the stock and you're done. Okay, so the new trigger has been installed when we're back at the shooting bench to, uh, to try to get an idea what it's like now and see if we made any difference. Uh, so stick around and we'll try a couple of shots and see what we get. This is a very elegant rifle. It's, um, it's just put together so well that the, the old trigger is kind of an insult to an otherwise wonderful rifle. So let's see what the new trigger is capable of. And uh, I'm going to just shoot at a target. We're not going to bother putting the camera on the target because uh, we're more interested in what the trigger feels like than whether or not we hit the target. So uh, without uh, wasting any more time, let's go ahead and give this thing a shot and see what we get. Okay, so the trigger pull is a lot lighter. It's probably down to about two pounds, maybe even a little bit less. However, I still have that little hitch, that little click, just as I'm reaching the second stage. Uh, I don't know if any way to describe it other than to say it's a little click. Uh, I pull the first stage, and it's coming back nice and easy, nice and easy. I hit a little bit of a bump, and all of a sudden, click, I'm up against that back wall, ready for the second stage. Uh, it's a little disconcerting. Uh, I don't know if that's a hallmark of all of these 124s or if I've just got a, uh, a particular gun that does this uh, because it did it with the old trigger and it's still doing it with the new trigger. However, I did get the pull down to uh, a very manageable level, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I don't do a lot of hunting anymore, so I'm, I'm more of a precision bench shooter now. I'm trying to keep my groups as small as possible and with a heavier pull that made it really difficult to do. 
but right now it seems like it's a lot better. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cock the gun, load a pellet, and then I'm going to put the microphone right up against the, uh, the stock where the trigger assembly is, and maybe you'll hear that little click. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it, but uh, hopefully you will because it's, um, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing to describe. So let's try that and see if it works. microphone right up against the trigger. I'm going to pull back the first stage. Did you hear that click? I'm going to do it again. Pull back the first stage. Oops, fired the gun. Let's try it again. stage slack, little click, fire the gun, one more time, hopefully you'll be able to hear that, I bet you can hear those pellets, the microphone is sitting right next to the tin, <laughs> all right, microphone near the trigger, bring up the slack, fire. So anyway, um, the click is a little bit disconcerting, but otherwise the trigger is perfect. I, I'm absolutely loving the results. I think it was well worth the time that we did it, uh, that it took to do it, I should say. And uh, I want to thank you folks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Airgun channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Hit the bell if you'd like to be reminded of future videos. And by all means, if you enjoyed this one, give me a thumbs up. Thanks again, folks, for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Airgun channel. Have yourselves a great day.